Hello, welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at Kubernetes networking part two. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on Ingress and Ingress controller. Now, I know this video is a little bit late. It's like I've been a month since I posted the last video. We we're looking at services and so on. But hey, um, work, life, yeah, COVID, all kinds of things. So I'm fine. So thanks. Um, if you're concerned, I don't know if you were concerned or not, but hey, let's get into this. And so let's start off with what does ingress mean? So if you are not a networking person and you haven't been around IT people, you might not have heard the word ingress used um, in the way like IT people use it. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's also a word that um, doesn't have to do specifically with computers. And so let's look at the dictionary's definition of what ingress means. And it says the act of or fact of going in or enter. Uh, not a definition, the capacity or right of entrance. And last definition here, a place or means of access and entrance. So you can always use ingress in those sort of way. And so it doesn't have to be tied to computer. That's why I, or computer technology, that's why I wanted to show you the, just the layman's dictionary's definition. Because that is the definition that's in my dictionary on my Mac. And there's also this word egress, which you might hear again, networking people um, talk, um, talk about. And so they might say ingress port or egress port. And egress is just the opposite of ingress, which is exit. So when they're talking about traffic that's entering a switch or a device, they may say, oh, this is ingress traffic. And if it's traffic that's leaving that device, they'll say egress. This should give you a hint that what we're talking about today is traffic that's going to be coming into our Kubernetes cluster, or at least into our service, because we were talking about service and getting um, external access to them. Now, we show a bunch of ways of doing that with, you know, the different um, service types, right? You know, whether it's cluster IP, node port, and all this other stuff. And so this is yet another way. So this is not a service type. That's why this is not service part six. This is just a way of networking in Kubernetes that's going to allow us to get traffic to our um, service anyway. So what is an ingress controller? So we know what ingress means. So what is an ingress controller? So an ingress controller is a Kubernetes resource, just like a service is a Kubernetes resource or a pod is a Kubernetes resource. So ingress controller is a Kubernetes resource to configure how a Kubernetes service is accessed from outside the cluster. In other words, how traffic enters the cluster to be routed to our service. Now we know this is have to be about traffic from external to the cluster because once you're part of the cluster, once you're within the cluster, you don't have to do anything special. You can use a service name, you can use a surface IP, all that stuff to access that service from any node within the cluster. All right, so Kubernetes ingress controller is a service and it's managed by a load balancer. So let me read it again. Kubernetes ingress controller is a service managed by a load balancer. What's happening here is that the ingress controller, there's an ingress controller service that allows you to create, you know, ingress controllers and manage those ingress controllers for you. But it's actually a service and we're going to see that. And that service is managed by a load balancer or created by a load balancer. So before we go any further, let's jump to the Kubernetes documentation to see what it says about ingress and ingress controller. So we'll go to the Kubernetes website and we'll click on documentation. Then we click on concepts on the left hand side and we scroll down a little bit and we see service load balancing and networking. Click on that and then scroll down a little bit more and then we'll see ingress. And so if we read this, it says an API object that manages external access to the service in a cluster, typically HTTP, but you can imagine that is also HTTPS. It says ingress may provide load balancing, SSL termination, and no name based virtual OC. We'll ignore some of that for now, see a little bit more as we go along. But at least we know that our ingress here matches up with the dictionary definition that talk about, you know, place of entrance. And here it's saying is managing external access. And when we talk about a service, external access is all about traffic, right? That's the only thing we really do and send to our application is traffic, right? Network traffic. 
and the API object here is just like a, a resource. Don't worry about the details. Why it says API is a long time I showed you. So for Kubernetes, there are a number of things on the control plane, and one of them is the API server. We don't have to really think too much about it because our Kubernetes um, kubectl command talks directly to the API server. So it translates all those documents and everything and command we type to API calls. Um, that's what's happening in the background. But let's continue. So that's what ingress is. What is the ingress controller? Can we talk about ingress controller? In order for the ingress resource, remember I said it's a resource, to work, the cluster must have an ingress controller running. Unlike other types of controller which run as part of the Kubernetes controller manager binary, ingress controller are not started automatically. For us, an ingress controller started automatically in the form of that load balancer from Traffic. Remember I showed you that when we created the K3D cluster, that's how it started automatically. I also said that if you build your own cluster, you wouldn't get one unless you install Traffic or some other um, load balancer. Use this page to choose the ingress controller implementation that best fits your needs. And you can see for AWS GC, they have those, or you can use Nginx as an ingress, ingress controller. We don't have to worry. Um, K3D come with traffic. All right. So let's go back now to our presentation. So I've simplified our cluster, but you've seen this diagram before. I've stripped away all the ports and all this other stuff. But basically, what I showed is that you can have external to a cluster, a load balancer that then sends traffic, traffic to your cluster. And when it hits your cluster, it meets the little thing in the middle there. And so before, I just call it a load balancer, but let's just call this a external load balancer. And the reason I'm going to call it external load balancer, because I want to differentiate it from the load balancer that's inside of our Kubernetes cluster. And this is going to make sense in a, in a minute. And so if you look at that little thing that's pulsating there, it's always been there. And I put it there on purpose from the beginning because it's acting as like a rotor or a director where traffic comes in and it decides, should it go to service A, should it go to service B? It knows how to get it there. But I never spend too much time talking about it. But that thing, that's the load balancer. So we always had a load balancer within our cluster, okay? And so that little circle there represents our internal load balancer, if you will. And of course, there's an external load balancer. Now let's simplify things a little bit further. And we're going to take away the external load balancer because you don't need it that specific to whatever you're doing. This is, for example, if you're running Kubernetes cluster, AWS or GC or Azure, one of those guys, as you configure your service internally in Kubernetes cluster, they're going to create external domains and all this other stuff. And you, they can have external load balancers. So we don't care about ex anything really external to the cluster. All we care about is that once traffic arrives at the entrance to your Kubernetes clusters, your Kubernetes cluster will happen. And so in this case, it's the little circle. It is our ingress controller. So when we say we create an ingress control, what we're really saying is we create or attach some kind of information to our load balancer such that it knows if I see a request or traffic going to, let's say, the path slash A, it should really be routed to service A. So there are ingress in this case is ingress A, you know, each resource in Kubernetes sort of have like a name, right? So ingress A defines that traffic going to path A should be routed to service A. Now, we're gonna see the details of this on the command line. So we just need to just understand this idea of we creating an ingress controller and that's configured with our load balancer. And our load balancer now is going to be able to use the information in our ingress controller to be able to route traffic. We can likewise create an ingress controller for service B. And we can say, if you see requests going to slash B, we'll send it to our service B. So if that makes sense so far, and hopefully it does, I'm trying to keep this sort of simple. We're going to see it with our practice on the command line just now. All right. So if we look at the more complex or full picture of what our cluster look like, right? Remember, we have our Kubernetes cluster that's running inside of Docker, that's running on Windows or Mac, whatever. But we also have other applications like our web browser and all this other stuff on our computer or on the network. Again, 
if you have something that's exposing port on your computer, it could expose those on your network so that other um, applications on your network on other computers can access it. But for now, we're going to just say within this one computer. And so we still have our load balancer there, right? Remember, we always have this load balancer in our Kubernetes cluster. I will show you that in a bit. So our load balancer is listening on a port. Why? Because I said that our, our load balancer is, you know, there's a Kubernetes ingress controller service. It is a service, just like the service A and service B. So which means the service, it has an IP address and it has a port. And so by default, our load balancer port is on listens on port 80 and also on port 443, but we'll just stick to port 80 for now. And so if we have a service in our cluster, which is our ingress, our load balancer, right? Listening on port 80, if we can port map that port 80 from our machine, then we can then have our web browser connect to let's say port 8081 on our local machine, and that would be redirected to port 80 of our load balancer and our internal load balancer in the cluster. And therefore, once we're hitting the load balancer within Kubernetes, man, if we request path A or whatever, it should route to service A or path slash B, it should route to service B or whatever we configure a thing. So this is enough diagrams. So let's jump to the command line and play with this a little bit. So here in the command line, I'm about to run watch minus D and I'm gonna call kubectl get service. The reason I have the minus A there is to mean all services, which means services that is in our default namespace or any other namespace. We haven't talked much about namespaces, but just trust me and let's run that command. So right now I do not have my cluster up yet, but we'll do that in a minute. In the second part of this terminal, I'm going to do watch and get endpoints. If you remember, we talked about when you create a service, always also create this thing called endpoint and the endpoint is the thing that's looking at which, uh, where the nodes are, the IP addresses and ports, sorry, IP addresses and ports for the pods. So that service is using endpoints to figure out all the pods that it needs to be able to route things to. And then we're gonna be looking at ingress to see which ingress are available. So let's just run those and watch those. So right now, no cluster. So let's create our cluster. So we know that's gonna be K3D and it's gonna be cluster create and we're gonna say minus a for agents and we want three and minus s for one that's fine let's just create that way now the thing i want you to, to notice is that i haven't pointed this out before but look at this it says creating load balancer i give in this name k3d default f server lb just like it give these k3 default the name of the cluster essentially an agent dash two server dash zero now in a previous video when we talked about node port services we saw that oh, we can bind to one of these nodes in our cluster by saying that oh, we want them to be mapped to our local machine but we're not going to look at that right right now but i just wanted to show you that we do get a load balancer by default all right so our load balancer is up and if we go back now to the top we're going to see that we have this these are all services so in the default namespace, there's this Kubernetes service, with a, which is a cluster IP service, and it has an IP address, and it's listed on port 443. And that is the Kubernetes API endpoint itself. Then there's the Kubernetes DNS server to create a um, domain name for all our pods and services, and we're not going to spend too much time with that. And there's a metric server. We're not going to worry about that. But this is this traffic, and there's the name of the service, and it's actually a project by that name. And it is the type and it's load balancer. So it created a service of type load balancer. If you go back from our previous video, you see it all, we can create services of several types. We can have a cluster IP service, a node port service, or a service that's a load balancer. There's also a service with a name, but we didn't talk much about that. And so our load balancer service here has a cluster IP, and then it can point to all these computer or the IP addresses for our nodes. And notice though, load balancer service is listening on port 80 and 443. Remember I said that the load balancer itself is listening on these ports. So don't worry about the other port, these 3000, uh, whatever, 3001, 31000, whatever. Um, the important thing is just it's listening on port 80 and so on. Okay. And if we look at endpoints, well, we have this one endpoint there. 
and it's pointing to whatever. Now, we don't really care. It's an endpoint for Kubernetes, again, for the Kubernetes service, so we don't really care. We're not managing that. Okay, so um, let's, um, I want to destroy this cluster. So we do K3D. I just want to show you that we get a load balancer by default. And so I'm going to do K3D cluster delete. And then I'm going to recreate it. But this time, let's do create cluster. I press up on my arrow key. And this time, I'm going to say I want to map a port. And the port I want to map is I want to map on my computer. Let's do map port 8081 on my computer to port 80, which is the load balancer. And we'll call it, you know, load balancer. And this is just the name load balancer is understood to mean the um, service load balancer. So remember I told you about that weird naming thing that happened in, in K3D? So that's all we we're trying to map into. So now if I create my cluster this way, now I'm going to have a local port on my computer um, tied to that. Now, if you have a Linux or a Mac computer, you could do netstat minus AT, and then you can do like grep for port 8081. And what you should see is something that says like listening to port 8081. Now, the load balancer is going to be listening to that port, but it does, it's not routing any traffic or anything. No, it's just literally listening. So if we try to connect to it or anything like that, there's not going to be anything. But we can see our Kubernetes cluster is coming up. We do not have our load balancer yet. Remember before we had um, an entry here saying load balancer. So it's not quite finished, even though it returns, it says created successfully here. It's not quite finished here because we expect to see a load balancer. A few minutes, seconds here for it to show up, and there it is. So trip traffic, load balancer, and there's the load balancer. And again, you know, it's listening on port 80. So nothing different. All right. I mean, it's looking at different internal ports, but we don't care about that. So let me control C here and let me rerun this and see if um, this is going to tell me. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do LSOF minus I and I'm going to do colon 8081. So that says um, anything that's listening on port 8081 and I don't care about the protocol. And then now when I do this, we should see it how it says listening. And it's saying that it's something to do with Docker, some command, Docker command, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, so it's listening. That's fine. And I can potentially just start um, listening here with our while loop, right? So we had this while loop where we would say listen, do curl command and local host 8080 and then echo. And I'm going to do it um, every two requests per second. So that's why I have 0.5. And if I do this, we should see that our page not found. That's because even though we sort of listening on port 8080 or load balancer doesn't know what, where to route any traffic. So that's why it says page not found, right? Let's now make a directory. Well, actually, I don't want to make a directory. So I'm going to start off where we left off um, in the previous video. So I'm going to copy and let's copy um, service um, part five. This is where we left off. And I'm going to call it um, episode 1002 Kubernetes Networking Part 2 Ingress. And so I'm going to create that directory. Okay, well, I have to create it recursively. That's number one because we have files in there recursively. I'm going to create it and then I'm going to CD into that directory. Let me start my VS Code editor, that directory. And so let's zoom in and make sure we can see. I haven't done anything we haven't done before. So this is quite literally where we left off. So let's go look at our deployment. And this is our deployment for application. So a little too big. And our deployment was we had this A server, if you remember, it was a simple Go application that simply um, returned a message that says, you know, essentially, um, this is the name of the host I'm running on, which would be the name of, I'm gonna take out this resource um, thing just because I want everything to fit on the screen. And essentially, we have, we built it and this is the name of that ta image tag. So again, nothing. It's running on port 8080. That's the container port um, that it's running on for deployment. Now, in terms of the service, our service is very simple. When we were doing this, we do it a node port service. But I'm going to take this out and 
we're going to just use a cluster IP service, which is the default. And again, it's just metadata, the name of our service. Let's simplify the name. So we'll call it just a service. And then the selector is going to be service. So that's going to look for the pods with this tag on them. And we're going to, let's just simplify it again. I'm not going to give a name for my ports. I'll just say the port is port 80, which is exposed on the service. And it targets port 8080. But since we're not doing node port, we take this out, of course. And if you remember, if your target port and port on the service is the same, you can optionally ignore the target port. So, hey, we can do that too. So up to you if you want to make it explicit or not. But they're both the same, so but I can I'll leave it. But that's our service. So let's go ahead and create um, these. So I'm gonna go back here. And I'm going to clean up and let me just run kubectl and then apply minus f. And I'm just doing this directory because I'm in this directory and it should create our deployment and our service. And so we have that up and running. And notice our service is in the default namespace, which I say we have the name of it is Acer. It is a cluster IP because that's the default. That's the IP address of it. And that's the port that it's listening on. All fine. I'm not looking at the deployment because we already know what that looks like. It's nothing interesting. But notice our endpoint. Our endpoint was created for our um, A service. And right now, it doesn't show it's um, picking us picking up any um, actual IP address. Um, it should be um, picking up our, um, our pods. Uh, we should have a few pods. So let me zoom in here and take a look so we should see let me clean that up so we should get kubectl get deployment not pods, yeah deployments and a service and we should see there are two running oh they're not ready that's why oh that makes sense well if you remember one of the things that we have to do is we have to k3d there's a new um cluster we have to import image or oh, image sorry image import and we have to import our image, which we don't have. So if I import it, what should happen? It should put it in our cluster. And pretty soon we should have um, our deployment should go to ready. And yes, it's imported. Now we have um, two um, pods created and it's being picked up. So yes, that's because our deployment say to create two pods. So that's all good. All right, sweet. So that's all working. All right. So Remember, if we go into the cluster, this says cluster IP, we can just simply use the service name or use its IP and we're going to be able to access our thing. But we don't want that. We want to access from externally. Previously, we found that oh, you can do a node port and then we can map it to one of the nodes within the cluster. But we want to use the load balancer. Remember the image I show. So all we have to do now is create an ingress and then we should, should be able to, because we're already hitting port 8081. It's just that the load balancer is inside Kubernetes. It's telling us like, hey, I don't know how to route something on the port I'm listening on, port 80, because you remember when we hit port 8081, that's actually going to hit port 80 on the load balancer forward slash. So I don't know how to get to that. So um, that's why we get page not found. So let's create a an ingress controller. So I'm going to call it a server ingress controller, ingress that YAML. And we'll do ingress and Kubernetes ingress. And we'll call it a server with the same name. And notice API version, kind ingress, metadata. This is the name of it. Label, we'll stick a label on it. Why not? And then here's this thing called host. We're not going to do host in this video, so get rid of it. And so what we're going to do is HTTP. So the rules, so this specification, there are rules. And the rule we're going to use is an HTTP rule. And you can read all of this. And the, the rules can be, we can have multiple. Since it says rules, we can have multiple. So here we can see that we have the paths and the path type. Now, the way I like to put this is I tend to I like reversing these guys. So I tend to like doing it this way, where I put the path first. And, and the reason why I like doing that, again, it doesn't matter. Because remember, we did our YAML. And what YAML means, when you put a dash here, it just means there's a new object in an array that has the properties path, path type, and backend. 
So it doesn't really matter which one of these come first. But I like you seeing it this way so I can say, oh, within paths, there's a path that has this property. So this is what our ingress rule um, is going to match. If it sees forward slash and we're going to say, oh, the path type, the way you match it is prefix. And you can read up on all this, but I want to make this video a little bit short. So I'm going to ignore that. We just leave the default as prefix and the back end, which is the thing that you're trying to reach. OK, the back end. So you could think of this is how we mesh thing in front and then how we wrote it to the back end. And the back end is a service. And what is the name of the service? Name of the service is a server. And what port are we trying to hit on that service? Port 80, because remember, uh, we could have multiple ports on our service. We talked about this before. So that's all there is to Ingress. So let's go ahead and create this. So we're going to, again, go QCTL, apply. And we'll just apply everything in this directory. And the deployment and service should be unchanged. And the only thing we should be creating is the ingress. And notice as soon as I did that, look at what happened. We start getting traffic from our service. This is super, super awesome. Like really cool and simple. Look how easy that was um, to get. So we don't have to do any, try and get the node port. We can just simply hit um, the service. And you could see it loads balancing. So this is where the documentation says that the ingress can also do load balancing. But we knew this because Trafik is saying that its type of cluster it is, um, service it is, is a load balancer. So if you create an ingress controller that Trafik is monitoring or managing, guess what it's going to do for you? Load balancing. It knows how to reach all those nodes. So it is going to send um, traffic to any pods that's running any one of those nodes. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. And so we can scale up. We can do Q CTL scale. And if we do scale, we want to scale our deployment, right? And we can see how many replicas. Let's go to one. And the deployment we want to scale is the one that's called a service. And so if we run this, we should see that how, let's go along to the bottom here. We should see that how, as we take away here, we should see that how it's only hitting one pod, right? Because our service is responding with the pod it's running on. And if we scale it up to, let's say, four, we should see it how this change, and you can see we're hitting some different pods. And so it is doing a little balancing for us very, very easily. Okay, so I think this video is plenty long, so I'm gonna cut it here. What we did today was use the load balancer traffic that is comes with um, K3D. Traffic, like I say, is just an open source project for Kubernetes. You can go look at it. There are many other load balancer and traffic routing app, um, projects for Kubernetes. It's just that K3D uses traffic by default. Um, so that's a really nice thing. If you use a cloud provided Kubernetes, they're going to have a load balancer for you configured in and outside of your Kubernetes cluster. So you don't have to worry about it. Once you create an ingress controller, it's going to automatically route things to that service that you, you created. So we'll continue and look at some other examples. But for now, that's it. I did not ask you to subscribe or to thumbs up the video. I presented the material, but if after watching, this video, if you find it useful and you're not subscribed, I would appreciate you at least thumbs up the video, but I would really like you to subscribe and um, load the channel to grow if you stuck around this for the whole video. For those who have already subscribed, thank you. And I really appreciate it. I really do mean it. I appreciate that you guys being subscriber and um, sticking with me and being patient when I, it, I can't get to post videos as often as I would like. Um, I see that there are some comments. I'll address them. Um, and so, yes, I have plan to get to those. Okay, take care and let me know if you have problems with any of this um, Kubernetes stuff. Um, see you in the next video. Hopefully, it's within a couple of days. All right, stay safe. Bye.